Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this one I'll be... Well, in the last one I was just playing around with a space station, but I, f I feel like that that's not how I want to get the tech tree. Um, yeah, I feel like I want to get the tre tech tree by exploring, not by orbiting a planet and time warping for a while until I get enough science to complete tech tree. It's a lot more fun when you well, actually put effort into it and explore the solar system. Especially when you're in a planet pack that you want to try. Um, and you probably have already noticed, I have got procedural parts. You can just ignore that, they'll probably be gone by the next episode. Um, that's just because I was playing around with the real solar system when I was just, um, when I wasn't recording. Uh, yeah. So this is... I didn't really know where I was going to go. I was thinking maybe Ike. Um, I was going to go to the closest body that I could go to. There we go, it's about like a staging and auto strap. But yeah, I was going to go to the closest that I could go to, and I didn't even know there was a closer one in this, um, in this planet pack. But there is a closer planet than even Duna or Eve, which is, yeah, very useful. There we go. Um, so this is enough for two crew to last about three years. And um, that does give me a bit of time so I may be able to launch a rescue mission for them. At the end of the mission I do leave them stranded in orbit around the foreign world that they go to explore. Um, this was on purpose, I didn't plan anything, you may have noticed I didn't add a parachute. Yeah, I didn't actually plan to recover their ship. Something smart I could have done though was to add a heat shield and a parachute. I did actually have enough Delta V to deorbit and land on, because I landed on a moon of a foreign world, but I could have actually landed on that world if I added a heat shield. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I had enough Delta V, so I could have done that. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to go to Dredos' moon, Dredis, I think it is. Um, there we go. Seeing it's a target, and because I don't really know yet how to... Um, or set your view back to your ship. I assume it's a tab or something. I, I didn't really think of it though when I was playing. So yeah, um, I just had to. I was just gonna fly prograde um, while waiting to get into solar orbit. That did take a while. This is sped up. This clip is sped up around three, four, or five times. It varies clip to clip. There we go. Um, so that's set for one orbit's time. I'm gonna watch, you're gonna watch me do the burn, but you're not gonna watch me do it the first time, because I actually failed the first time. Um, because I, I sort of forgot that it was the second orbit around. So I started doing it. This is the second time where I actually did it right. I get a very close, yeah, quite a close encounter, it is at least an encounter. And then I adjust, adjust it with another maneuver node. As you can see me making there, just to yeah, just to get a close thing. I want to circularize when I'm close to. I'm not sure if it, it is more delta v if you circularize closer to a body, but yeah, you know, I'm not really sure. I think it is. And also, something very interesting is, I managed to, well it's not really interesting but it's just cool, I managed to get a encounter with the moon that I was trying to get an encounter with while circularizing an orbit, which is, I think, very interesting. So I have an equatorial orbit, but it's not exactly, yeah, it's a bit of an inclination. And... Upon just about getting it right, I need to just do a quick thing there. And there we go, that's it, just about done. And then because of how the maneuver nodes work, I have to get into its sphere of influence for a proper maneuver node to work. And I seize the opportunity as I see it, and get a quick encounter with that. Oh, 
of Dreadus, I believe it is. Yes, Dreadus. I would I was sort of curious whether I'd be able to do this um this mission. Because usually I wait until I get nu nuclear engines before I do interplanetary missions. But this turned out fine. Even without them just a vacuum optifies optimized poodle engine. There we go. That's just gonna go straight into the top of it. It's slow down a bit, but with a bit of speed enough to going at a relatively safe speed, like, it would still destroy the ship if I was, if I was gonna hit it at that speed, but it would, um, it's slow enough that I can get, yeah, it's slow enough for now. I do end up landing on the dark side, but, yeah, it's not too dark, it's just a bit dark. That's a bit of an understatement, but it's <laughs> not too bad. I think this is around the mass of Gilly, maybe a bit heavier. I do feel like I had more of a struggle landing on Gilly when I did that back in the stock game in single player. Well, I still had a bit of a struggle trying to land without bouncing and things. I do resolve to land on my side, but that's after I do actually manage to land it here on top. But um, as you can see, after I time warp it sort of messes it up and yeah, I just sort of give up at that point and, and then I revert to a quick save and yeah, I just didn't even care at that point. I just, yeah, no landing legs, whatever. I found it would probably, I thought that it would probably be easier to land on my side. So that's what I did. And there we go. Now I've got a good amount of light. And just to test out the low gravity, uh fabulous astronaut here does a good front flip to uh just for a bit of fun yeah bring some science and things i could have benefited if i had a science lab i don't think i'd do that really yeah and i made a bit of a small joke on the flag to say isn't this an asteroid although i did i don't think i really thought about it when i wrote that it it sort of is it's just orbiting something so it's classed as a moon but really it was once an asteroid and yes, so now that we've um, successfully got the science, we just magnificently destroy it. And then move back to quick save, take some sc screenshots and do the actual flight. Without messing up. There we go. Gonna get the trajectory a lot more horizontal. So that it takes less time to be to circularize. I'm not really sure how the gravity turn should be done, I, 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 yeah, I should probably learn more about that. Yeah, and you might have, you probably noticed, but on the way down I actually forgot to get science, so that's what I'm doing right here. So that is low above, now I'm getting high above, and I'm also going to get just science orbiting the planet here which is yes quite a good um a good bunch of science a good amount to yeah get some good uh good good materials at the end of this i do now oh, you'll see there we go and now back in the ship, we can just time warp until we're in orbit of the planet officially. And get some good old screenshots and some science. I keep noticing that I'm moving to and away from my microphone without really thinking. I, I should probably try to not do that. Okay, so I've transmitted all the science back. 
And here we go, I'm on the tech tree. I'm going to look at this. Um, I decided not to get this. I was just a bit curious about that science object, I'm not sure. I think that might be for. I, I installed Realism Overhaul temporarily. That's probably from that. I think it may have left a few mods around. And there we go, so I just unlocked a few objects that I'd need for building rockets in space. So I might. I think next video will probably be some sort of orbital bit. Or a base in orbit, or, or a base on the North Moon, or something. This for building rockets, I think that would be a really fun idea. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.